Grace to you. I want to thank the Lord for being with for you being with me today. And I just want to say I'm excited because this is Holy Week. And um, I have always loved this week leading up to the Resurrection Day of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This has been my favorite week out of all the celebrations of uh, in Christianity, in my Christian life. And uh, because of where I come from in Ohio originally, it was the pageantry that led up to it. And not only the pageantry, but the symbolism and what everything meant. Uh, it meant a lot to me. Uh, it meant a lot to me to have prayer every day at noon. Uh, Bible Ways uh, Temple of Prayer we had. And then later when I was at uh, Bishop Watkins Church under him at Pentecostal um, Church of Christ, then later we had uh, a great celebration, great communion. And uh, he would have a Garden of Gethsemane that he had made up. Um, artists had made it and we'd have to go in there and pray our way through and not come out till we had prayed through uh, in that garden until we had communion. A whole celebration. So I just thank God for all of those uh, things that made that just were in uh, in my mind. <laughs> amen. Amen. What I want to talk about very quickly because I don't have that much time is we celebrated the high holy days and for Christianity, uh, Christmas is one of the main times, and we know that's not the uh, accurate day, December 25th, but the point is we celebrated it, and the point is that Easter is a lot of uh, paganism in the pageantry and all that that came through the Emperor Constantine, and but the point is we still celebrate um the uh, resurrection of Christ, and that's the whole point of the gospel, the birth, death, burial, resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was born in this life and died and rose again to save the whole world, all of us that would believe, to save us from our sins. You know, because he died for everybody, all mankind, whether you believe or not. But if you are um, to, to appropriate it, is the ones that's going, the believers are the ones that can appropriate that salvation. Okay, he made it available for everybody, but you have to believe in order to receive it. Okay, and so here we are. There's a lot of miscalculated uh, dates and things, but nevertheless, it's being celebrated. Today, people are coming against Christianity and opposing it, and they're opposing it like other religions. Christianity is not really just a religion, all right? It's not, a religion is a set of just principles and practices. Christianity has principles that are sent down from God, from heaven above. Okay, uh, we don't have just a lot of man-made practices. Now, some churches may adopt, each teacher may adopt some of their own traditions and practices. But actually, Christianity came through the line of Christ and before that, through the Jewish people. Okay, so... Theology, as we know it, is the study about God. It's uh, there's the, uh, several kinds of theology. It's a set of principles, practices, okay, about the divine. Sometimes it's systematic theology, practical theology, historical theology, different types. But it's also the study about divinity, about God. And it's something that you don't know and you're really having a quest for him. Christianity is about Christ because his followers know him. Okay. Jesus Christ, Christos, Greek word for anointed. He came and he was the anointed one. So his followers were first called Christians in the city of Antioch, Jerusalem. Okay. Acts uh, chapter 11, verse 26. And they said they were first called Christians. In, in that city of Antioch because they were Christ followers. This is in the first century, in that century. He, they were followers of Christ, followers of um, the way that they walked with him uh, and all the things that he taught. He is the son of the living God, came to show us how to live. 
in the Old Testament, you saw the type and the shadow. The Old Testament was a lot of laws and rules and regulations, some of which are relevant for today, not all. But some of the uh, some of the things I do know, the feast days, life still runs around those same cycles uh, all the years long. Okay, so but the but the um, Old Testament was pretty much the type and the shadow. The New Testament was when the Lord brought us Jesus Christ came to not only save us from our sins, but to show us how to live, how to really live in this life, how to live this thing, okay? So he came to show us how to live with each other, how to live in life, what to do. He came to teach everything that was in his teaching. So he was and is known by his followers. He's not unknown. Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 17, I believe in verse 26, when he went to Greece, he taught he noticed that they were in idolatry and they were had all these different types of gods and philosophies. Much like today, people have a variety of gods and philosophies. Just like they say, oh, I can believe in this and I can believe in that. You can believe in whatever you, you choose to believe in, but that doesn't make it true. A lot of people say, well, I have my truth, you have your truth. That doesn't make it true truth, okay? It's only one truth, then most of the rest of them got to be lies, okay? All of it can't be true. <laughs> My God. Anyway, so here is, he said, he said that Apostle Paul was teaching them this. You don't know him. You all are uh, making an uh, uh, idolatry to an unknown God. You are uh, celebrating an unknown God. You are talking about somebody you don't even know. I know who I'm talking about. First John, I'm going to read that one through three, and then I'm going to wrap it up very quickly here. What was from the beginning, what we heard, what we seen with our eyes, what we looked at, touched with our hands concerning the word of life, and the life was manifested, and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write to you so that our joy may be made complete. That's 1 John 1, uh, verses um, 1 to 4. Intimacy with him is how you know him. Being baptized uh, in his uh, in the water, fully baptized. Jesus was even baptized. We follow him. Okay, for those that say, oh, you don't need to be baptized today. If Jesus was baptized, we're following him. We are baptized in water, water and spirit. Okay, you must enter in heaven, John 3 and 5. Okay, so then you fill with the Holy Spirit. You fill with his spirit. And then you, uh, uh, and after you have repented of all your sins, we all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. We repented every day in this life. Okay, we become followers of him. Learn about him. Come find a Bible-believing church. Wash and fill with his spirit. Get among followers and begin to know him through his word. And we get to get a relationship with him through prayer, through fellowship with him, through following him. And becoming like him. And we're growing in grace. Nobody is perfect as far as we know perfection. But what we need to do and have to do is as we appropriate his word in our lives. Okay. And as we are healed. A lot of Christians are not healed from old things from their old life. And so when we are healed from our old things in our old life and can continue to walk in Christ, walk in love and apply what we learn. We become more and more like him. And God does do things for us. He is real. He is because we know him in intimacy. We're not talking about something we don't know. We're not talking about an unknown God. We're talking about something that's real. It's not a fantasy.